Hello, and welcome to the Inside EVs podcast for June the 11th, 2021. This is episode number 62. Our top, our top stories today, Tesla kicks off Model, Model S Plaid deliveries with a special event. A compact Ford electric pickup truck appears to be in the works. And Lordstown Motors appears to be running out of gas. I'm Dominic Yoni, Inside EVs forum moderator and Inside EVs editor. Joining us today is the wonderful Tom Logney. Inside EV's editor and host of the YouTube channel, State of Charge with Tom Logney. We also have Martin Lee from the EV News Daily Podcast, available on all your usual podcast platforms. And of course, Kyle Connor joins us from Out of Spec Studios. He also puts together zippity doo da zippity day <laughs> videos for the Inside EV's YouTube channel. Please subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications. Okay, so welcome, everybody. Um, I, so I want to kick it off by talking about what's in our driveways this week. But uh, I'm not sure if anyone has anything that we have driven for the first time this week or a new thing. Tom, I don't think you have anything, right? I don't have anything new, but I'd like to just spend a quick second sure. uh, talking about uh, recent experiences. So um, I have a, a dual motor long range Model 3 of 2021. And uh, in the last couple, two weeks on successive weekends, I drove about a thousand miles each weekend. Now that's that's a lot for me. It's like Kyle drove that this morning before he, <laughs> you know, before he came on the show. But um, you know, for me, that that's a good drive. I typically don't don't do a thousand miles in and over the course of weekends. So I had to go up. To, I went up to Maine to visit some family up to Kinney Bank Bunkport a couple of weeks ago, and then this week I had dealership training up in Massachusetts. I do this um, with Plug in America, this Plug Star Electric Vehicle Dealership Training, where we basically train dealers how to sell electric vehicles, and we had a bunch of them up in Massachusetts. So I had to drive all around the state nearly to the four corners of the state. And uh, the, the the point that I'm making here is the funny thing is on both trips, I literally got my car and just headed the, headed up, you know, to where I was going. Didn't even look at public charging. Didn't look for superchargers, never even checked that. And the point I'm making here is that, that's, you know, one of the things that Tesla does really well is superchargers. And you know, they're just there. And now I know there's some parts in the country where you might get some comments from people say, you know, oh, I live in South Dakota or whatever. That's not true here. And you're right. They're not absolutely everywhere. But the, the Tesla's filling in those gaps with no other electric vehicle. Could I just get in my car and head out on a, you know, a 500 mile one way trip uh, with a car that, you know, is going to go about 250, 260 miles single range? Comfortably, I, I'm not going to take it down to zero. Um, and the te the whole experience, the road trip experience, literally was not an ounce less convenient than if I had a gasoline car. Uh, because you know, uh, you know, I, I don't drive five hours. You know, refuel my gas and then drive another five hours. I'm 54 years old. I got a bad back. I've had two surgeries. After three to four hours of driving, I'm shot. I need to get out, stretch my legs, use the bathroom. And it just works perfectly. And you, you can just select the, the the supercharger you want to go to. It's, it doesn't force you to alter your route. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to remind everybody that Electrify America and the other networks, they're catching up. I mean, we couldn't, a few years ago, it wasn't even possible to make long road trips with um, non-Tesla vehicles. I mean, without being incredibly inconvenient. And they're catching up and it's getting much better, but it's still not like, if, if I had any other car, before I left, I would have plotted out my trip. I would have said, okay, I'm going to go to this charging station. And if that one doesn't work, okay, I have a backup two miles away. That just goes away with Tesla. And, you know, I just can't wait until we get to that point where every electric vehicle is that way, where you could just go wherever you want. You don't have to worry and you don't have to plot out your trips because early adopters and EV enthusiasts will do that. You know, we'll plot out the trips. I'm, when I had my Mini E, it went about 90 miles. I drove it 220 miles up to Vermont. I had to stop every 75 miles for four hours to charge at you know a level two charging station. No normal people wouldn't do that, you know. So you know I don't want to keep dragging this on, but I just want to remind everybody, you know, we 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 so we're critical of Tesla with a lot of things, which I think is fair. But damn, that supercharger network just makes driving electric normal. Now, and not just uh, the I can't wait till we get to that. Not, but it's also the amount of chargers that they have. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and it's like, of chargers. 
you know, one or two of the other networks, and I know they're getting, they are getting better, and the money is insane to put in, uh, you know, it, not Tesla superchargers, but if you want to dig up the street and put in 350 kilowatt chargers, I mean, wouldn't we all love to have a bank of 10 of those? The, the numbers are crazy. I mean, being a charge point operator is a thankless task on a good day. Like, the capital investment is mega, and the thing about driving to those is even with the live data, I've done it before. I've got the app. It says the charger is free. I come off the motorway slip road. 30 seconds later, someone's been on it for 10 minutes. And I'm like, well, this is clearly isn't working. And now I'm waiting. And, and it's like just having that choice. It's not just where they put them. It's that they do it big. And that, not so much for me because I kind of like the thrill of the EV drive. But for my wife, she just wants a car. And the fact that it's electric, she loves it, but she doesn't want to be, she just wants to turn up and charge. And, and, and so in her brain, she's like, just build 20 of those things so that there's one for every one of us. So it's the choice as well, really, really important. And they just keep building bigger and bigger. Um, and it used to be Kettleman was the biggest, but there's oh, Firebower, and then there's another one coming on the West Coast, isn't there? And there's like a hundred of these things. It's amazing. With restaurants. To, to, yeah. to Martin's point about the price, I'm not sure people really understand how expensive supercharger or DC fast charger sites are. A, a, a typical Electrify America, let's say, or any brand, uh, a, a, a DC fast charge site that has, let's say, six units, say two of them are 350 kilowatt, the other four are, are 150 kilowatt stations, that can cost like $750,000, that station. One okay. station to install for the equipment, for the engineering, for the permitting, to upgrade because now the utilities are made, uh, want them to, you have to foot the bill to upgrade the whole electric infrastructure to that site. So that's one location. Think about it. And they, and they have, you know, uh, we're talk, if we're talking about Electrify America, they have 20, uh, uh, how many, 600 now sites, 600 sites. Do the math. I mean, it's incredibly, incredibly expensive to install this infrastructure. That's why it's so amazing that Tesla did this. I, I God, I wish we could somehow get an accounting of what Tesla has put into worldwide supercharger infrastructure. That would be awesome. I mean, I would, uh, and and they should be proud of it. Like if I emailed them and asked them, could you give me a breakdown? You would yeah. think most companies would be like, sure, look at what we're doing. But you know, it's 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 Tesla's way that they 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 don't reveal information like that. But it would be a, I think it would shock people if they saw what Tesla put into infrastructure. Right, and it works. I think Kyle has some thoughts on infrastructure. I don't know if you want to bring it. <laughs> no, we don't need it. We'll do a show on that at some okay. point. Right. All right. So, so, Kyle, are you driving anything this week? Uh, I'm driving way too much this week. But, okay. Um, anything new electricish adventures? Um, yep. So, I'm doing range testing on Maki and ID4 both this weekend. So, I'll okay. be in the car for lots of time. Uh, they're both the big battery rear wheel drive aero wheel version. So, they're all the efficient kings of their lineup. Okay. Uh, so, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Any predictions? No predictions. <laughs> we'll see what the results come out to be. Uh, I have to find a really good loop around here. I think I'm actually going to start in Denver and go east into Kansas and then back to Colorado is going to be my plan. It's just going to be the flattest ground. I okay. But we'll see. That'll be kind of the, the fun challenge uh, after today. And uh, yeah, lots of other stuff, not electric Supras and you know, you name it, but been having, having fun this week. That's for sure. Right on. All right. So I guess let's, uh, I, I, oh, uh, Martin, did you do your range test in the Kona electric yet? I've not got, I've not got around to it. So I need oh, to, I okay. need to, I need to go into, but I've been driving it um, okay. and, and finding out the little quirks in that, in the new Kona. And I just continue to enjoy the car a lot more. Two things that uh, I don't like is the gear change um, because I just, I find that it's, it's not, it's not slick enough. Um, sometimes it will change gear. Uh, when I'm still doing a few miles an hour and it'll kind of crunch into gear. Uh, and other times I'll be jabbing the button and my foot's on the brake and it's not engaging. So I'm not keen on that. Um, mm. and, and and like there's so many bongs in that Kona that I don't know what the hell I've done. And I think oh, you've got to live oh, with the car. Sound? Sound? Like, like sometimes I'm like, what? Like there's a different bong for the sunroof being open or the door is open. I keep getting out of the thing and leaving it on. And the, a, the noise it plays as you're walking away is like an old dial up modem uh it's kind of like this weird staticky noise as you're walking away from the car going what what do you want why won't you lock like, oh i've not pressed the off button and that's ridiculous in an ev but my zoe has it 
And I, I always turn that car off. And yet, maybe I'm just getting used to the Kona, but I'm, I'm keep getting out of it. Da 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 da. Shut the car down. Walk away. And I got to go all the way back and reach around and turn the damn thing off. You shouldn't have to turn off an EV. Uh, but hey, it, 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 but it's all user error, by the way. Is what I'm trying to say. I can't drive the thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So. Yeah, when you were saying bongs, I wasn't sure if you had like a car full of smoking devices or what's going on there. <laughs> bongs in America are a little bit different it's, things. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Kind of translates. It's not my car, so you know I got to be respectful. <laughs> Mark, do you know if it'll automatically power down in like five minutes if you walk away and just leave it on? I mean, uh, but, that, it, I've not tried that, but uh, actually, no, it doesn't because I came back to it the other the other day without the key on me, uh, the other, uh, and it was it been open. But what I do like about the Blue Link app is is it you can set up notifications. So uh, if you haven't locked it after a minute, two minutes, whatever, I do get a little push notification from the app saying, hey, your car is still unlocked, just to check. And that's nice. I hadn't used the Blue Link app before, and so I'm all set up on that as well now. And that's actually pretty good. It's, a, it's one of the better apps out there in terms of heating, cooling, locking, unlocking, remotely, uh, valet mode, and stuff like that. That's an important part of the ownership experience. I know there's a lot of discussion on the Inside EVs forum about the uh, that app, and there were some issues with it at some point, but it sounds like they're they're being ironed out, I guess. Yeah, it's worked perfectly for me every time. And uh, yeah, a couple of times I've just not had the key on me, and I'm like, it's fine, I'll just get the app. And, and, and so, so that's nice when they've put that thought into, which is the way that it should be, but it's not essential, but it's a nice touch. All right. So as... As many of you probably already know, uh, Tesla held its big Model S Plaid delivery event last night, as opposed to the Battery Day event last September when the audience in attendance was, they all watched from their cars like they were at an old-fashioned drive-in theater. People were, uh, I think, free to walk around and mingle, just like in the before times. Uh, <laughs> so to participate, I understand that Tesla did require attendees to bring proof of a negative COVID test or of a vaccination. But And I did see still some masks, uh, you know, it was kind of, at the event afterwards, they had some, uh, some uh, whatever, uh, demonstration drives. Uh, but anyway, so the show kicked off uh, a little late, uh, as usual. Uh, I thought Elon's performance was a bit, hmm, what's the word? Like a haphazard, I guess. Um, it seemed like he was trying to follow like presentation slides, but then they weren't working. Or So, so to me, I don't know, it, it felt like super awkward, even more than usual. I mean, he's not maybe the smoothest delivery uh, it doesn't have the smoothest deliveries like me, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but still, the, the, like I've, when I used to working in an office, there was nothing more frustrating than a manager having a meeting and reading out a PowerPoint. And that's what he did. And Elon at his best, best will let the slides tell the story, but then he'll be like, oh, this is really cool because we did this. Right. But, and he did that with kind of the motor and the winding, and he kind of he right. elaborated a it little bit. Better. And it's like the codec, uh, you know, it's all like we'll, over the air updates, it'll get better. But so much of it was him just looking down at those two screens and reading what was on it. And I'm like, I can see that. Uh, right. It wasn't his fi finest. He looked tired as well. It seemed like they, it, there were some problems with it. Like it wasn't showing what he thought it was going to be showing or I don't know. Anyway, it did, it did improve after as it went along, I thought. But it wasn't like super polished. And, but that's not really why people tuned in anyway. We, we, we want to hear about the Plaid Model S. And we did. It, we learned it has... It's motors, it's three motors are carbon sleeved and can spin over 20,000 RPMs, which is a significant speed. Uh, I don't know, I have a list of different things here, but uh, Tom, what was the bit that you found more interesting, something that you didn't know before? Honestly, there wasn't that much. Uh, you know, to me, uh, it, I, I didn't learn that much from last night. I was really hoping to get a little bit more meat done. That's my, my biggest overall take is that it was disappointing that we really didn't get much. I mean, it was, you know, give us something. Uh, right. Very little information was provided last night that wasn't already commonly known, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it was kind of a bizarre event. Uh, as you mentioned, Elon, Elon's always a little, you know, socially awkward. Uh, and it's part of his charm, you know. But it, al it almost usually seems like he's having fun doing it. He smiles as he's, like, being a little awkward. And every now and then he'll sure. do a little dance or something. But he looked genuinely uncomfortable last night. Like he was just over at SpaceX having like this really intense meeting. And they're like, Elon, you've got to go do this presentation now. And he's like, OK. So he gets in his car and drives over. And they say, like, OK, what are we doing tonight? Oh, plaid. OK, turn the teleprompter on. Like he never had seen those the, the, the cards before. I mean, who knows what was going on, uh, you know, but it was definitely very unusual. It seemed un 
unusual to me. I mean, I've been to some of these events. I've seen them all. And, uh, you know, it was very disappointing in my opinion. You know, I mean, the car is fantastic. It looks really cool. Um, you know, performance. They've done some great things with it. But we didn't really get much meat last night. He was talking about safety, which we all know, you know, Teslas are incredibly safe. They're how fast they are, how powerful they are. We had all those specs. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys pulled out of it more than I did. I, I really didn't get much out of it last night that that I was hoping to get. It was a, a, a hybrid event, wasn't it? Because it wasn't a, a product launch because we right. knew all the details already. And yet there were a couple of tidbits of information. Sure. But also it wasn't a, a proper handover because it was 25 of them. So, I, you know, it'd be really great to have... You know, people getting in their cars and, you know, driving them away because all the paperwork's kind of been done in advance or or even having like people up on stage or on mic or like shining the spotlight on the customers, the people that, you know, have been supporting the company for a long time. But there was none of that. And there was no. And finally, there was no big announcement. There wasn't, you know, the battery day was odd because of COVID and everyone was in their cars and the weird honking. But they had all the vehicles on display and it was in daytime and they didn't even do that and it was it was a weird kind of hybrid mix of well what is this event meant to be apart from just for the sake of kind of doing it right yeah. I didn't, it was weird and it was it's hard to feel let down because actually what they were showing off was amazing like mega performance fantastic car like you know anybody would love to have this ev in their driveway and there's a little bit of kind of let down about it it's weird if, if you if if you really need one thing that maybe I learned was that they were going to add the waypoints. I think that oh, yeah, was right. that, that was probably for me the biggest thing that I learned that would. Elon said this like, about a year ago on Twitter that they would do it. Right. Yeah. So well, I missed that. I missed that one tweet, Kyle. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Did uh, did you guys get more of it than I did? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean I thought the most in interesting thing was, or the most informative thing was the uh, supercharging speeds or the fast charging speed. So this Model S Plaid will have a faster charging speed, it, but, but they didn't give us a, like an overall number, like the zero to 80 or 20 to 80. We got 187 miles of range in 15 minutes, which is, you know, 15 minutes, almost 200 miles of range, or say, even if, if you want to be super conservative, conservative, you could say like 150, like real world, world miles, if you want to, you know, uh, but that's that's really good. Fifteen minutes. Is that yeah, much better than the current? Miles. Is that much better? Not the same as like what a normal one does, yeah. and and Taycan's right up there too. Right. Yeah. And actually, so, it is so. It's less than what the new Korean cars. If they'd done the ten to eighty, uh, they or you know all the time to add a hundred miles. That's quite a common stat. Uh, it, it's worse than the Hyundai Ionic Five and the Kia EV6. And that's what's weird is I think we're also used to Tesla events pushing things. And pushing the boundaries and and he was like eh, it's got a 390 miles it's like yeah it's worse than the car you were selling it's like okay so the power you know the the naught to 60 time is better but the range always gets bigger it's like well, hang on you can do over 400 in a model s was it 406 is the official or something and then this one's worse so i think that what felt uh, added to that feeling of discombobulation was we used to be blown away like our oh, roads that came out the back of a, a, a of a truck and it's I feel so bad feeling that way because it's an incredible machine they've made. And the tri-motor stuff and all of that really should be the focus. Right. Um, and there's one comment here that I, I, I agree with and I actually forgot about. Um, uh, somebody post, uh, electric vehicle had posted, Franz disappointed me with the sledgehammer. And, you know, when when obviously when the, when the presentation starts and he's standing out there with that giant sledgehammer, right. I think we're all kind of expecting something really cool. It, and it was, was like, oh, oh, yeah, we're going to smash some records. But like, yeah. then that's it. And then the hammer goes away. Like, but anyway, I mean, it was a cool thing to add, but give us a little bit more of it or more fun with it. Let him sm break something, <laughs> something right. like that, you know? He looked so, good. Didn't he look good, though? As in, he looked... Oh, yeah. Happy, confident, yeah, relaxed. Yeah. When he yeah, walked he down, done the like, presentation. He looked, <laughs> you know, he looked tanned, like he had a holiday. Uh, he just uh, was a uh, was totally. Uh, it's when uh, he was on stage recently at Battery. Drew Baglino again, someone who looks kind of like really up for it. And right. uh, I, I think don't know. Drew left the company though, right? Didn't he? Did he? I believe so. I don't oh. know. Maybe someone can remind me in chat. Yeah, no, no, uh, no. I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, but anyway. Um, so another thing about charging real quick is that he did mention that supercharger speeds would be improving. And I think he gave several increments like 
280, 300, then 350. So, which is what the, the Electric Fire America stations can reach now. So we can see, we should see some uh, Tesla supercharger parity with uh, those capabilities and, and hopefully vehicles that can take advantage of that uh, ability. Because, yeah, I mean, 187 miles of range of 15 minutes is, is good. But as you guys are pointing out, it's not, you know, blowing anybody away and at this point. You know, it's not like the Hyundai numbers, really, right? Kyle? Well, at some point, the field was going to catch up to them, Dom. You know, yeah. Tesla has been so far ahead of, ahead, of, ahead of everybody for so long. I think we're just expecting them to just, you know, keep blowing everybody away. But, you know, at, the field is, is, is catching up, is my point. Right. Uh, they did say it, have a, it has a heat pump now, so it has improved in thermals, so it gives the 30% better cold weather range. So that's going to be something to try, try out this winter. And I believe that he said something about the cabin heating up uh, with half the energy or something. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, yeah that's he was about, talking uh, about cold weather performance with the heat pump where um, it will use 50% of the energy of the current car, I guess, uh, to run in colder temperatures. And that's true. Heat pumps are more efficient in cold weather. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, look, we didn't really learn anything crazy new. I think the biggest thing for me was that power curve looked to be amazing. We don't know at what state of charge that it can still produce that kind of power at those kinds of speeds. And overall, I mean, I think uh, from my side, it was as expected, totally as expected. We're doing right. a Model S Plaid delivery event. Great. Here are your cars. Well, they didn't even show us anyone taking delivery, but the cars were there. And I assume someone has them at their driveway right now, or maybe Tesla said, "Oh, they're not quite finished. You can't." No, have no them. I saw I saw a little clip of one on the road last night. Great, so that's fantastic. So they're on the road, and they went yeah. what they uh, they did what they accomplished to do. Right. They did say uh, the radiator the radiator now is twice as large, so it can accelerate repeatedly with no degradation up to you know they didn't say up to what point because at some point you there's know, always a point. Vehicle, right. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, what but else the current learned? Model S can do zero to sixties back to back too. It's sort of a myth that it can't. I mean, I've done P one hundred D launches 10, 20, 30 of them in a row, and and they just do it. And they're maybe the last one's not as quite as fast as the first one, but they still rip pretty hard. So this whole repeated thing, I think, was played out a little bit too much, and that that was mostly from journalists. I think it was the problem of the automotive media overheating these cars. All right, tracking. Like yeah, on a you, track you is drive it down a track and they're they're done after a lap model s's um right. well, maybe so this will be better. We'll oh it, yeah. it absolutely will be no question right another another interesting thing i thought was the uh, tesla acoustic glass so tesla sometimes get knocked for being a little bit noisy um so the, we're looking for some huge improvements in that area now it has their own and it's a tesla acoustic glass he specified it wasn't like a supplier's glass right they make their own glass um I'm sure it's like from Pilkington or something and then rebranded as Tesla. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe they make their glass in house. It's possible that they do, but uh, you know, the, this type of glass coating surface, whatever Tesla wants to call it is not unique to Tesla. So many automakers use sure. laminated double pane glass. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. Model S, I, I never thought was particularly a loud car to be in uh, early ones. Yes. But recent ones, I was just in a brand new model S recently and it was, pretty great nice uh but you're not really big on the speakers i think that's improved a lot too they have like this new one has 22 speakers and they've written their own codex so they can improve the sound quality over the air cool yeah that was interesting i don't know i think 920 watts doesn't say it. again like tom said tesla used to be the best at everything you know there's cars you can buy today with two three thousand watt sound systems now do you need that no because it'll just melt your ears if you go full volume uh 920 watts is still more than a healthy amount but you're never gonna reach full volume in this thing uh, but again 22 speakers 920 watts it, that doesn't set any industry standards here. And, but sure. the sound system in Model S, I always thought was not bad. I, you know, certainly not class leading, but I always enjoyed it, especially the upgraded one. I thought it was designed really nicely. Again, another system that was designed in-house at Tesla. I believe it was rebranded Harman Kardon units. But, uh, you know, they had the ex-BMW sound engineer going over to Tesla to build their sound system. And I thought that they were good. I mean, Model X is a great system, too. Um, this should just be a bit better. 
Right. Um, and we did see actually too, that was kind of interesting. Oh, we got some uh, quickest production car ever, they say. So they, they posted a little bit about that on, on Twitter. And actually, uh, if I may just remack automobile, tweeted back at them a little video of their own showing the, <laughs> showing the new Navara uh, doing better than this. And people will argue that it's not in production yet, the Navara, but it just about is. They had a big event on the weekend, actually. They had a, a bunch of owners coming to, to hang out in Croatia uh, with uh, Mate Rimac and the crew there and trying out the, diff the different cars and seeing what's coming to them soon. So, I mean, this is great and they're very different cars. And But can you really save the quickest production car ever when, you know, there's a, there's a car that's got a good half second on it? Just like a, a month away yeah i know my you know it's the whole production question as well like tom you said last night on the live stream uh pre-show 25 cars now and 100 cars here and there isn't volume production you want to see the line working at max capacity and if that's not happening till september october later this year because they're still ironing out details then what was the point of last night that's at 25 cars is like they did more than that at the first Model Three event, didn't they? And they got the, the staff ones handed over. So, like, well, he he did say the volume production was going to start next quarter. Yeah. Now the next quarter starts in three weeks. So, right. you know, when does is 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 it early July or, or is it you know <laughs> end uh, of September? End of September. You know, so um, you know, right. with Musk time, it's probably the end of September. But you know, that was one of the questions that I wanted answered. He kind of answered it there. So we have guidance at least of of what the production is going to look like and over the course of the next couple of months right so several hundred several hundred cars a week soon and a thousand a week uh, next quarter i believe is the number she was throwing out there last night production wise but this isn't their you know their volume leader this isn't the, you know their money maker anyway yeah but don they have a lot of orders that they need to clear out of this there there's there thousands and thousands of orders as i've That's said good. numerous times on the podcast so many of my followers have reached out to me over the course of the last four or five months or like, Tom, do you have any inside info on when this is going to launch? Because I can't wait any longer. You know, I, my lease is up or whatever. And, and they were promised deliveries in January, you know, so right. and six months later, and they still don't have real guidance on when they're going to get the car. Many people. Uh, yeah, I know. Obviously, some people got them yesterday, but uh, most, the majority of the rest of the customers don't really have any kind of set production rate. And that's hard. If you're if you're trying to extend your lease, or if you're just trying to uh, bridge the gap till you can get this car, and uh, you know Tesla needs to 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 give give the customer some clarity on that, please. Right, but at least they have their orders in, and because if they're ordering today, it's ten thousand dollars more than it was, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, ten thousand. That's a good price, but that, but that also goes to the you know there's a big. Uh, chip shortage right now for com computer chips for cars like every manufacturer is having issues their factories have been shut down there's no production you know by major oems and major cars it's it's kind of nuts right now so i i can't really give you know i got to cut tesla some slack a little, little bit in this area because we don't know exactly what the issues are that they're dealing with behind the scenes right yeah, I don't think we need to c cut them slack. I mean, it's their right; they can charge whatever they want for their car. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not like they're they're now saying everybody that reserved one at this price, you've got to pay ten thousand more. It's well, it's ten thousand more moving forward, so they can price the cars whatever they want. I don't think ten thousand. I don't think the, the chip shortage is costing is is making Tesla you know increase their prices by ten thousand dollars. Personally, I mean, it could right. kind of be it's like an excuse. Chips. Yeah, it's, it's other, not other just things. Ex 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 exactly. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's just them saying how much can we charge for this product for yeah. when people will buy it. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't, doesn't really usually work that way, though. He just, I mean, other cars, he's cutting the prices, cutting the prices until he can't. Now, they're, now the prices are going up. because Well, you can do that for your lower end models. This is the halo product of Tesla right now. Sure. Why would you want to make it cheaper? Make it more desirable. The more yes. expensive it is, the more desirable the product is. And, uh, and think of it this way. They're, they have such a backlog right now. They have thousands and thousands of orders. Um, the people that are going to be ordering them today, they're not going to get their car till the end of this year. They might not even get it this year. So why not bump the price up a little bit more and kind of, you know, you know, push the envelope a little bit. And, and so they're basically saying, look, you know, we, we almost don't want you to order this right now, but if you really want to hear, you're going to, you're going to pay a little bit more for it. The price, I bet the price gets lowered at some point over 2020, uh, 2022. 
once oh, yeah. they, they've worked out their this bottleneck of, of production, they've delivered all the cars, watch, that price is going to come down a little bit. You're right. <laughs> and they, re a, they redesigned the second row. That, that's it. We're looking at the interior now on, on if you're watching this on YouTube. And that interior looks great. We're looking at for like through the roof from the top down. I, I love yeah, it. like he said, he said last night as well. Oh, it's actually got a, it's got a proper back seat now. And he kind of laughed and, and did the kind of muttly laugh, and then went, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, it's a proper back seat now. And I'm like, just diss the product you've been selling for the last ten years, why don't you? <laughs> like, I, I, not that's not new news to anybody, but it was a bit weird. Yeah, I mean. Like, also, that oh, render that we're I... looking at is a bit weird because they've really mucked up the screen. They've, they've. They've made the little cartoon screen face completely the wrong angle on this to make it look like, <laughs> to make it look like you know, the screen uh, is bigger than it really is. But that's uh, like the interior is so cool with those two screens. We haven't gone onto the computer and stuff yet. Like I've got right. no, I've got no use for PS5 computer tech. It's not a PS5, but like that level of gaming in a car. PlayStation uh, Five. Someone, yeah, like someone somewhere has, and that's like that. That is just redefining what's in a car. 60 frames per second is, is no joke on Cyberpunk's... Uh, Not at all. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a high-intensity game. I don't have it downloaded yet because it's you know, it's not really my deal, but um, but well, that, that kind of intense gaming, that requires a lot of computing power. That's It's nice to see in a, in a car. Mm. There, there's been a lot of, uh, I think, disappointment in the room. Uh, what about the things that were good? So here, can I, uh, let me share my thoughts really quick. Uh, sure. Looks like unbelievable cool acceleration. Drag Times posted their video recently. Uh, you know, those motor windings, that whole motor gearbox unit that's capable of producing big power up close to 20,000 RPMs. Very impressive. I think Model three uh, and why go up to about a hundred or sorry, 16,000 RPM right now, something like that. So significantly higher uh, centrifugal forces in there. The, uh, the carbon structure, I'm not, I don't actually know that much about electric motors to know what benefit they're really having there other than holding everything together, which was a problem on early model S uh, induction motors. Uh, three permanent magnet motors is an interesting decision because you can't shut them off. Like you can a, uh, induction. a an induction motor thank you very much and that is going to be an interesting move for range so they gave up a little bit of range to do the three motor thing what i think this car comes down to is it seems like it's going to be like if they just announced this and forget that they ever said anything about plaid plus which we shouldn't forget that or forgive them for doing that right. uh, but let's just pretend this was the the thing that came out everyone would be super excited about it um, I think it just comes down to the driving dynamics. I think Model S styling still looks better than EQS, than Lucid, arguably than Tycon. I think this is a gorgeous looking car. Um, the spec that he rolled up on stage in was identical to my old Model S, which kind of made me miss it, which is the really the first time it happened. All blacked out, but with the white interior. Love that look. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the fact that it's now got probably better sound deadening so nvh is going to be quieter the uh driving dynamics are going to be a whole nother level of uh dynamic with this uh rear uh torque vectoring uh functionality and then getting software updates for that over time and potentially seeing a track mode making its way to model s uh so i would say you know really cool stuff here from the car I also just think like, didn't Elon used to say like, don't go to meetings if you don't add any value or anything. This could have just been an email. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that, uh. that that kind of sums it up. I don't think the presentation added anything. Uh, and and in that reason, I'm disappointed. I'm not disappointed in the car. The, uh, we might some of the, the the followers here might think that our kind of negative slant a little bit is about the vehicle. It's not. I think it's going to be a great vehicle. I can't wait to drive it. Really interested to check out the uh, the powertrain. We got a little view of that yesterday. And um, one of the things I'd I'd love to see Sandy Monroe do is, you know, down the road, get one of these, get the Lucid tri motor, do tear downs, and compare those drivetrains. That's that would be such an interesting video for me. Kyle and I were at a Lucid event last year, and we had the opportunity to look at the Lucid. Lucid's going to be making a performance model of the Air, which is a tri motor. And I was able to take some pictures of the uh, of Lucid's tri motor um, powertrain, and it was so compact, I couldn't believe it. And right. both both of those motors, there's two motors in the rear axle. Um, 
are 650 horsepower. So you look at, you know, it was 1300 horsepower at the, at the rear wheels on the Lucid Air. And, and now Tesla, it's hard to really tell the size uh, to be able to compare it, but that, that Lucid powertrain was so small and compa compact. It looked like I could just pick both motors up myself and walk away with them. Uh, so that that's something that that I think we need to keep an eye on, and 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 really it'll give us a good idea on how these two companies are lining up technology wise. Right. Can we talk about Lucid and one of the reasons I think that there was a weird feeling around that, and that is because Lucid did five seventeen miles the next day. Whose idea was it? Did it come from the desk of Elon Musk to say we're going to make Plaid Plus? It'll be five twenty miles. It'll be three more than Lucid. The crown is still ours. And then right. all those months later, having to go, ah, oh, yeah, 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 we're not making that because look, th look over here, this one's really good. That one, no, 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 we're not making that. And it's like if we'd never heard of Plaid Plus, if they hadn't done that stupid thing the day after Lucid, because Lucid got a lot of PR for that, come yeah. out the, the next day and gone, oh, we're going to make one that's three miles more. If they'd never announced Plaid Plus, this, I think, the tone of today would be so different because we'd just be celebrating what is a massive car. And yet right. somehow there's this kind of whiff of disappointment around Tesla and it's all of their own making. And it's kind of, it is their fault, but I feel bad for them. We haven't said it outright, but uh, just to remind everybody, the Tesla Model, a, uh, Model S Plaid Plus has been canceled this week. So they're not going to make that car. And, you know, we're not even sure what all the ramifications are. That was supposed to have the new, uh, the new big batteries in it and so it probably give a lot more performance and it was just going to be built completely differently it would probably look the same they were saying on the outside but you know it was a significantly different vehicle so you know personally you know i think i kind of think that they're they're going to make that car they're just going to either call it something else or it'll just be a completely re-engineered car which is what it should be doing anyway if it, well, I, I just think they couldn't do it. So they promised something to just get the headline so that everyone in the internet forums who do these like side by side comparisons of Tesla versus, you know, Toyota Corolla or whatever they're doing. And so like Tesla just smashes everything on, you know, on paper for products that don't yet exist from Lucid or Tesla. And they just mind numbingly waste their time comparing stats of, you know, invisible, you know, totally, uh, 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 false vehicles that are not real things. And then Tesla got it and they got in the news. Great. And then they canceled it. But, you know, saying they're going to do 520 miles of range is a page one story that goes right up front. Sure. And then it's a page 11 or page 12 when they say, no, we don't want this. No one, you know, it's just canceled. Okay. Look, I don't even see news about it anymore. So right. Tesla got all the benefit for making up something that they didn't bring to market again. And that's wrong. What's right, what's good about Tesla is the stuff that actually hits the road. Uh, and I think we spoke about this a little bit last night in the live stream. We just cannot uh, really, uh, Tom and me evaluating cars, we can't start relying on what automakers say about them. Lucid doesn't exist right now. We have a good feeling about them. We have no proof it'll do 517 miles on a charge in the EPA cycle. It hasn't hit the roads. It hasn't been through the EPA cycle yet. We just don't know. Uh, so all of this was just, you know, who knows? Maybe Lucid's doing the same thing. We don't know for sure. We do have a very good understanding and feeling from the company. Uh, and I think we all kind of felt the same way when uh, Tesla did release the Plaid Plus. I think Martin made the comment all those months ago that said, did someone just go in and make up numbers that looked better and then put it on the slide? Because that's exactly what happened. Oh. And then they said, oh, we actually can't do this. We'll just cancel it later. So that's that. I mean, look, at the end of the day, Tesla's building a pretty badass Model S right here. And that should be very heavily credited. I can't wait to drive it and test it. And I'm sure it's going to be one of the most exciting cars to come out of Tesla for me personally, because I love the Model S. I love the hatchback. I love the new interior, love the styling. But, but it, like, who? how do we give them crap for totally lying to everyone for all of these months? Right. Well, the thing is, you know, Lucid is now going to be able to come out with a car that's, you know, that does better than, than the, the Model S Plaid. Because their tri-motor thing, we've already seen it uh, you know, nine point two three seconds, whatever it is, a quarter mile. They Wasn't that, that just was some the time dual ago. Motor? They that just showed us the dual motor dream no, they, edition. No, they have, we, there's a there's a there's a video tape video of, uh, of the tri motor on the drag okay. on the drag tri motor little thing on the back of the bumper. It was so it was a tri motor configuration. They, we know that they have one, and so there's a good chance that's going to be a production model at some point. 
and there's a good chance that it's going to be even better than it was like a year ago or whenever that video was shown. And it's probably going to have like a lot more range than 390 miles. So I think I think by canceling the Plaid Plus program, you know, Tesla is kind of ceding that performance crown to somebody else. Well, to Kyle's point, um, Lucid hasn't done anything yet. Okay. Sure. And and by the time the tri-motor air comes out, if it comes out, Tesla might have already brought the Plaid Plus back because, you know, now now they can do it. Uh, and, uh, you know, who knows what the future holds. And that that's that's basically what Kyle just said. And, and I agree with him on that. You know, I, I'm a, a, Hold on. a believer. Can you say that again? Can you yeah. say I didn't hear you. <laughs> well, every once in a while I have to, well, I'm paid to agree with Kyle. Um, so this is, yeah, this is recorded now. So June is covered. I don't have to agree with him again until July. Uh, but, uh, um, <laughs> you know, from everything we see, it appears like Lucid is for real. And, you know, we get a lot more access than the general public does. We get to talk to the engineers, we get to visit their facilities, you know, so we, you know, see all these startups and we can get a, a, a general feel of whether companies for real or not. And I'm usually in the past, I have a very good track record with this, with the exception of Byton. I, I fully say, expected Byton to make it. And uh, maybe I didn't really, fully understand how the Chinese government maybe gets involved with companies as much as, you know, as much as they do. And there's a lot of politics involved with who succeeds and who doesn't. And I think that was part of the whole Biden downfall and the coronavirus also, you know, really, really hurt them. But, um, you know, for, for what I've seen so far, I fully expect Lucid uh, by the end of this year to be delivering vehicles. But that said, they haven't done anything yet. Uh, so, you know, we can't we can't really say, Dom, that, you know, uh, for now, Tesla is seeding that production that, right. um, you know, uh, performance crown to Lucid because, hey, you know what, Lucid, start rolling cars at a Casa Grande, do a delivery event like this, even if it's even if it's, you know, not very well organized and very well delivered. Uh, but hell, the cars are on the road now. Uh, sure. The Model S plebs are, are, are on the road. And uh, we got to give Tesla a lot of credit. And it's an amazing vehicle. But you know, one thing we haven't talked about yet, really quickly, is that price delta. Um, 50 grand for the, the, the Plaid. And what do you get for it? You know, I looked at the Tesla website and I, I had, you know, assumed, and I haven't been really closely following the Plaid. I have to admit that. I mean, I've been following it along, but I didn't really follow everything you get. I had assumed that that would include some kind of upgraded wheels or some some nice fancy new thing on the inside or a special color, uh, you know, paint or something that gets thrown in with that. But no, you get nothing. Performance. I mean, you, you get performance. You, you get, you know, point two seconds or something. What 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 what's the difference? Well, what's well, the so zero to sixty on the long range? All right. Well, well, this is. Let me chime in for a second. Zero to sixty time is you know just just about a second difference which is a, yeah. a major difference That's but difference. the thing with performance cars of the past was a bmw m5 for example costs mm -hmm. roughly 20 to thirty thousand dollars more than a bmw m550 i mm -hmm. but it's not just the numbers that you're getting for that extra money you get a totally different driving experience you mm -hmm. get special m stitching here you get blue and red seat belts with the with the logos you get you know totally different braking system totally different suspension tire suspension they go through everything to make a holistic package mm -hmm. here in the tesla world and it's always been this way with the exception of p85 plus uh let me just throw some more power in it and here you go for 50 grand thanks uh, but i think now we might see the start of tesla being able to provide more than just sheer acceleration because uh you know driving these cars back to back they are identical in daily driving so you get no extra special flair driving a performance tesla over a non-performance tesla because the only difference is when you go past 75 percent throttle which to be honest i don't know how other people drive but i don't use that very often in my own performance tesla and i'm like why did i buy this thing um you know, and I keep getting performance Teslas. I don't know why. Uh, I don't drive very fast. The uh, I hate lies. Yeah, well, on track, <laughs> sure, but I haven't. Uh, you know, I sure, take media track. cars on track for the most part. I never take mine out there anymore. So, um, 
you know, now we have the addition of this torque vectoring system that can really alter the driving experience. This yoke steering wheel can start to feel special. Now we're starting to get some differentiation in the daily usability of the car um, that may not have been in performance Teslas of the past that may justify this big price increase. Right. Yeah, the torque vectoring, they didn't really talk about that much last night, and it's only on the rear axle. Um, but still, I mean, that should be... Well, uh, that's where most of the work happens with torque vectoring anyway. Right. So that should be a pretty interesting thing to feel. I mean, that's one of those kind of things I've been wanting, wanting to have, like, electronically controlled torque vectoring forever. I've been wanting to experience it. And so, yeah, that's kind of one of the things that I was kind of excited about this setup. But they didn't really, they didn't spend any time talking about it last night or... I don't know, I guess on in a demonstration. So, uh, and we have some reaction shots after the presentation. Uh, the people in attendance there took lots of rides around this little test loop and they did a zero to 60 or zero to 100 actually acceleration, which was, you know, it doesn't quit, you know, before like the zero to 60 and the regular Model S long range, you know, it'll put you back. But and so in the new plaid, it just keeps putting you back, and, you know, until you're up like 100 miles an hour has gone by. And, you know, and it's time to slow down for the big turn in the track. I don't know how, how hard it pulls for how long, but I guess we'll, we'll be seeing that soon. Mm -hmm. um, and the top speed, the 155 miles an hour to the 200 miles an hour, even in, in Germany on the Autobahns, no very few, very few vehicles are going faster than that. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it, it just, I could see if it was 10 grand or 15 grand upgrade. I'm like, okay. You know, the performance is worth it, but for 50,000 for crying out loud, Give me something that even just walking up to the car, I know it's 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 a special car. And when I'm sitting inside, you know, so, something more than just yeah, it, it's it's got it, it's faster. <laughs> well, Tom, you know the point of the company in Tesla's world is to charge the most amount of money for the least amount of capital intensive design and engineering and production. So this way they can just make everything the same and then say, oh, what motors do we want to put in it now? And someone mentioned, you know, Tesla charges more for performance because it costs more. That is totally incorrect. A Model 3 performance is the exact same car as a Model 3 dual motor, uh, especially a stealth performance Model 3, literally the same car, and they would charge more money for it and you're getting more benefit it's like paying for software packages you know i have the same computer but now i can use microsoft word that was worth an upcharge thank you tesla can charge whatever they want for it uh i love that the hackers have now figured out how to just get in and turn everything on <laughs> so you know that's my world i like that let me i buy a product let me use it how i want kill my warranty i don't care it's not going to break anyway these things are reliable um so you know what, what what's going to happen here with the three motor we'll see but 50 grand people will buy it they'll sell every single one they can make i do not expect these sitting around on lots yeah hey so i don't know if this if, if this plaid horse is is dead yet but we should move on to another story How, how's that yeah well there was nothing super exciting from last night right i, I think <laughs> I, I was i was a little disappointed overall in a way the car is awesome you know it looks great I, I would love the opportunity to drive one but you know, I still you know wanted more. I wanted that. There was no other thing surprise. Which, you know, I know they don't need to do it. It's the delivery event. But you know, I'd much lot. rather I'd much rather them do this than give us another product that won't sure. come out for another few years. Well, like the production version of the Cybertruck. That's kind of I was like I said, of, it won't come out for another few years. So don't mention it. Well, that's coming out the end of the year. First, of they the year, say. Year. Okay. They say. Remember, we can't trust them anymore. Okay. I'll bet you a six pack. It comes out first quarter next year. I'll bet a six pack on that. Okay. <laughs> the um, um, the guy the guy who runs that uh, what's inside channel like the the family. Uh, I don't know I don't know his name, but right. he um he did uh, like a walk around of the perimeter of of Austin uh, after some rain, and they've got a lot of work to do there. I mean, there was just like water flooding into the building. It, it looked a long way from cyber trucks coming off the production line in November or whatever the date we were told. But they need, they need one finished building. They need, like, you know, and some I mean, some rolling cells off can, the line can be like Model 3, hand built, very few yeah. people a day. You know, what it, the numbers here are the big thing. They already they've got, got, tents. They've got right. tents in Texas. They've got tents. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, they are actually producing like you know casting big castings there already. So it's you know something's going on, even though they still have the roof on or the walls on in a lot of places. It's I mean they've done a lot of work over the past not even a year yet, right? 
I mean, in October oh, no it was a money field. On that. I, I, Tesla builds factories at a lightning pace. If their Shanghai factory was anything to go by, that yeah. was an amazing achievement. Crazy. Look, I hope we see Cybertruck soon. I think that's a very much needed vehicle, uh, and mainly because I want to see Tom drive around in that thing. Yeah. So uh, that'll be really cool. Yeah, I, I, as I said last night, I really was hoping he'd give us some little nugget, like once it was all over, and just be like, and blah, yeah. blah, 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 Cybertruck, Cybertruck, Cybertruck. Okay, good night. Just a just little bit, but no. Just right. something. Like the, anything. The, the new user interface, which looks amazing to be able to swap those windows around. And oh, you know, if, you're, if your passenger wants to control Spotify, they showed you, you know, it's dragging the windows around, which, you know, the computer has got, the car has got so much computing power. There's no reason it, it, you know, it shouldn't do that. For him to say, and this is what your Cybertruck will look like, or and make any of those little connections to the other exciting things kind of coming, but didn't do it, do any of that. But hey, it's their presentation. So, right. You know. So, okay, let's move on a little bit. Uh, a little more Tesla news. Um, the Plaid Model S was not the only Tesla to get a price hike. The Model Y uh, price also received another adjustment. Tesla prices have been yo-yoing up and down, uh, but as the uh, uh, supply chain constraints for chips and other parts continues, the prices of their vehicles have just been going up. Uh, this time it's by $500. So bottom line is if you want a Tesla Model Y long range, it will now set you back $52,490 plus $1,200 for destination. Uh, so that's $53,693. And I believe it wasn't that long ago. It was like under 50 grand, right? I don't remember. Kyle? Uh, 49.9, I think is what it was. Okay. So, yeah. So that's... Uh, yeah, but then you had to pay twelve hundred dollar destination. Yeah, that was okay. without destination. So right. it really still was really... slightly over fifty. So it's only maybe a couple grand then more than it was. It's not gonna change the, this that this is not gonna stop anyone from buying one, I think. I mean, you you buy a car for years, right? So like if you're gonna keep this thing right. for five years, that three thousand dollars amortized over three years is such a small amount of money that you're just like, I'll do it anyway. And sure. be like, Oh, bummed I missed out on it, but I'll still oh, no. go for it. I mean they're gonna they're sell, they're selling as many as they can make that's the bottom line really right yeah so then again charge more that's the point of the company why would they lower the price if they can't make as many tesla's yeah. not in the business of really truly trying to save the customer's money they're in the business of making a profitable business well they should be sometimes uh, you know I, i've been wondering why they've lowered the prices before in the past you know i mean to some people more. say it's just just demand but i mean they're already making as many as they can i mean they're selling as many it's, as they can make so it's the headlines it's tesla reduces price $500. It really costs them nothing. Everyone runs the story. We run the story, put it on the front page. Electric runs the story, puts it on the front page, and then people buy them. And then they, and, and they raise it, and then guess what? That's a blip, and then they can lower it again. And that's another big story. It's also to drive numbers for their quarterly uh, reports. So that I think that we see a lot of them playing with the, with the prices based on if they're on track to hit their numbers or not. So yeah, um, we've the been fact that they raise this me might mean that they're ahead of where they need to be we just had two ships arrive in europe so one from shanghai and one from fremont arrive within a, a day of each other and it's that, that that they do it all the time it's that end of quarter thing they've sold no cars in april and may uh, it's been out you know tests have been out of the top 20 in all the big countries where they buy you know sell evs and then they're just gonna smash and therefore they will smash the quarter so if you take a step back and look at the the first half of the year or tesla's quarterly sales still doing really well in europe if you, you take it monthly you're like my God, they're not even in the top 20 charts, but that's just, just the way they do it. But this end of quarter thing is uh, is still going on. And and we've just got tons of them uh, on dock sides and just waiting to get into customers' hands in the next three weeks. Well, the other yeah. automakers love that because they're like, oh, the Volkswagen ID3 was the best selling car yeah. this month. It's like because Tesla wasn't available to be yeah. delivered. <laughs> because they're on, yeah, they're on. Yeah. The inventory is so low. And so they get all the headlines in April and May. Tesla will smash it in, in June and win the quarter. But I don't know. It's just uh, we need to get Berlin. They need to get Berlin uh, yeah. open as soon as possible and just smooth, smooth it out. Yeah, I mean, Berlin's going to be a big deal. That's got all the Model Y. But Europe still hasn't gotten Model Y yet because it's all coming out of Berlin. And I, actually, I heard there's some coming out of the, uh, they're going to be some right hand drive uh, coming out of Model Y's coming uh, forward. No, don't early, tease uh, me. Is that right? I missed that. Is that right? I, 
believe I saw someone saying there's like a small number of uh, you know customers are getting notices right hand drive. That's, but I, that's I the car for me. That it's not on sale in the UK. Right hand drive is not on sale. If you go to that page, there's a little icon that says "Stay updated," and they'll send you an email once a month. Okay. So you can't, you can't buy one. JKEV commented that um, Tesla's price changes are no different than a GM or Ford incentive, and that's an important point. Tesla has you know the the set pricing. None of the other manufacturers have that, but they adjust their prices all the time. Yeah. You just don't get to see that. They do these factory to dealer incentives every month, new incentives come out. So the manufacturer is effectively lowering and raising the prices every month, even more than Tesla does. But we look at it as, oh, Tesla's raising the price, they're lowering their price. It, it, it's it's not nearly as severe as the 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 oh the the legacy OEMs do, where you have to know every month you've got to check what the incentives are, and the unsophisticated auto shopper doesn't know that. So you walk into the dealership and you don't know the true cost of the price. You look at that MSRP, but that MSRP is just a suggested retail. You don't know the dealer could have paid forty thousand for your car last week. And now they could be paying thirty six thousand. You have no idea it costs four thousand dollars less, and and you're at a at a disadvantage negotiating unless you look up before you go to buy and you know all the current factory to dealer incentives. They're available online, so if you are car shopping, make sure you look up factory to dealer incentives. Walk into the dealership prepared. Know what incentives the dealer is getting from the OEM, and and you're at a much better position. To negotiate a price. So, you know, we beat up Tesla with this raising, lowering, raising, lowering. Trust me, they don't do it nearly as much as all of the other brands. You just don't get to see it. Factory to dealer incentives. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, well, this is the thing that, that happens all the time. Like, that's how GM had, like, what, seven grand on the hood of these things? 8,500. So 8,500, the, the then, then you get the tax credit, at least when it was still around, and then you get your state incentives. Mm -hmm. uh, man, that would have been one hell of a deal. Right. It's still it's still going on now for the for the Bolt EV, especially the ones that inventory, the 2021 inventories, not the 2022s. I'm pretty sure it's still an $8,500 factory to dealer incentives right. that, you know, that, you know, you people don't know about. And, and they think the dealer is giving them a fantastic deal because it's so much less than MSRP. But they're getting 8500 back from GM. Hey, you want to talk about a real spicy deal? We're thinking about selling our i3. So what? if you're interested, let no. me know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we just never drive it. We have well, it's, a, like, it's a sellers like, market, man. If you have a used EV that you're not using right now. And Kyle yeah. will drive it to you anywhere Negative. in the 48 <laughs> lower states. No. Um, you gotta come personally pick up sign free. the dashboard. Kyle Connor. No. Nope. Um, I am yep. I'm uh, I, I'll make it happen. No, no, wow. me. Uh, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle will deliver the car to you. <laughs> when I was when I was in uh, in the states pre-COVID, obviously, and I saw you, there's like loads of adverts on TV. You guys have like they call it like the vending machine of used car. They come on the back of a lorry, and you just pick Carvana, one and yeah. on. Right, well, I, we don't have that kind of don't have that thing over here. But uh, that's what <laughs> Kyle will do for you anywhere in the country. He'll just bring it to you. That's not true. He'll hang uh, out with you. Uh, he'll babysit your kids. Exactly. Walk your dogs. You can play with his dogs for a little bit. All right. you know, I, I think you. I'll just sell this it is to gonna be great. Right. He'll come here and pick you up. <laughs> okay. Hey, so I wanted to hit this other thing too. Our, our time is uh, moving. We haven't hit our other two stories yet. Um, so, but really quickly, there's a big update coming to the beta version of the so-called uh, full self-driving feature on Tesla's FSD. It's coming in a week or two or probably two. No, three. they say they <laughs> say it will come in two weeks. I say it will come in two months, two years. Oh, wow, that's 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 a. They've been promising FSD beta with the button this for how right. long? It's been a while. <laughs> First off, I'm happy they haven't put it on all these cars because Tesla owners totally abuse autopilot. As an abuser of the system myself, I get lulled into a false sense of security where I shouldn't. This aids that, and. Um, not not a fan here sorry right. so so the tweet is one more production release of pure vision this week then fsd fsd beta 9 a week or two later fsd i mean v9.0 fsd is also pure vision foundational improvements are immense so this is again only for a limited number of people who have who have beta fsd so most of us will only be able to check it out vicariously through the videos of others and uh, that is unless of course maybe one of one of us has a friend with uh, FSD beta, Kyle. 
Are you in touch with somebody who has it? Oh, yeah. But okay. I don't like to do videos on it because I don't necessarily want to promote something that's not uber-duber safe at this point. Okay. I know I'll get okay. flack from that, but – and you're supposed to pay attention. And if you do pay attention, it's not dangerous. The right. fact is the system will lull you into a false sense of security. I've driven FSD beta, by the way, uh, a couple right. times now. And, um, you know, look, someone said who would beta test something that can kill you? Anything can kill you. You leave the house, you're taking a risk. Yes. Um and you still have, it's not like the car is just like driving away. You can take over. Right. Yeah, the, you're holding, you're still, you're still the driver. It's, yeah, but that's where the issue comes in because what Tesla that. doesn't provide guidance on is who's the driver now and who should be the driver now. Uh, and, and they don't tell the human in what scenarios should you take over. Uh, I wouldn't hold your breath for this. And uh, based off of everything I'm seeing from things that I can evaluate driving FSD beta nine and driving my Tesla around, it hasn't improved in years. It's great. Perfect driver assistance. I love it. I never want to live without it. It's amazing, but it's not getting better. I would say my autopilot's getting more hesitant and slamming on the brakes way later than it should. And if anything, I think it's honestly been getting a little bit jerkier. So I don't see much. Uh, yeah. Never see much going on here with uh, this stuff. What do you think, Dominic? Do you think are you excited about this FSD stuff? I mean, not. I mean, it's not really a thing that I would even probably use because one, I'm not going to pay ten thousand, and there's a rumor that the price is going to go up to fourteen thousand. I'm never going to pay that much for a feature because I, I can't. Frankly, I like driving. I mean, I'll use uh, cruise control uh, on like a long trip, maybe. But you know, generally, I kind of like doing all the stuff. You know. I'm maybe it's, I'm old. And, uh, Tom, do you have FSD in your car? No, I wouldn't pay for it. Um, uh, yeah, and like you, like you, uh, the basic autopilot for me is fantastic. I use it all the time. Uh, one of the things you said um, about not noticing improvement. One of the things I have noticed improvement in is phantom braking is nearly gone. When I first got my uh, my Model Three in 2019, that was a big problem. There were places where I drove where every day if I went under a certain overpass. It, it just would slam on the brakes. And that was so unsafe because if anybody was tailgating me, it would have, I would definitely have been rear-ended. But now I can go in those same areas and it doesn't phantom brake. During my long drive, the, these two weekends I told you about 2,000 miles, I used autopilot so often because they were all very long highway driving that I did for probably 85% of the drive. Um, and I only had one instance where the vehicle did kind of like a, 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 a phantom braking event. And it and the strange thing was it wasn't overpass. That always got me. The signs, the big overhead signs and bridges is where I had all this phantom braking. But what I had with this, what happened over the weekend was there was a tractor trailer riding in the, the lane next to me. And it kind of was getting close to, to my lane, but it wasn't, it really wasn't like, um, coming over even getting close to the line and the car just kind of slammed on the brake so i i saved that recording i i honked the horn because i wanted to see did i miss something going on that the car found and it really didn't so no, that it, happens you know, all the time yeah well uh, it's i tell you my car doesn't i i have a very good track record with it, it was the first time in months that i had a uh uh you know some kind of phantom braking incident that i couldn't explain why the car did that now i'll I, you know Going back to Kyle saying that happens frequently. Understand, Kyle, how many miles a year do you drive? Just just curious. Yeah, well, I haven't driven my Tesla in a, yeah. in a couple months, let's be honest. But it hasn't received a, an update yeah. in a couple months. Okay. Uh, but I did almost, uh, in this particular car, about 70,000 miles last year. Yeah, last year. So it, the, the, the number of frequency of events Kyle is going to experience is way more than the average person that drives. 15 to 20,000 miles a year. You know, he does, you know, five years of driving every year. So he should get five times more uh, incidents, uh, you know, of, across the board. So that, that said, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that said, in my opinion, the phantom breaking that, that was a big problem in 2019 when I got my car is nearly eliminated now. Yeah, and, and it's important to also mention that's not Tesla specific. Almost any car will phantom brake. It's mm -hmm. just that relationship mostly with the radar, but also the camera uh, 
trying to figure out if a Coke can is a wall or if a bridge is a wall. And it, it gets confused sometimes. And uh, ID4 does it. Uh, I've had that happen. What was I driving recently? Mach-E slammed on the brakes for me the other day. Right. Uh, <laughs> this is not uncommon here. But Tesla claims to have really good vision where they can then work on using their neural nets and algorithms to code out phantom braking. Sounds like in Tom's case, that's working really well. And that's what I'm most excited about with autopilot is this connected ability for it to learn over time. Yeah. Um, but we've not seen that in the consumer world really yet, other than maybe the phantom braking, maybe then the visualizations. But in terms of actual where I can use the system uh, from a consumer owned vehicle, hasn't really changed that much, to be honest. Mm -hmm. They've been focusing on all these FSD stuff. And then it's like, oh, well, all the work that everyone just did driving around the last one, well, we wrote, ev rewrote everything. It just, that was all a waste. Sorry to just like, you know, get everyone excited. That doesn't exist anymore. Well, I'm kind of excited to see other people have it because I do like watching some videos. It just blows my mind what it's capable of doing now. And, you know, I, I know it's like a lot later than anyone, than Elon had led us to believe, or he probably thought himself that they'd have this already by now. But um, I do think they will have, you know, full self-driving. And But until they actually announce this is full self-driving, level four, you know, you have to you're you are the driver you're in charge if you know i hope tesla just releases guidance on what that means right in actuality you are the driver when should you take over you know should it be anytime the driver feels scared well if you're me you're gonna let that system get right up to the edge to see what it'll do that's not safe because i'm constantly pushing it if you're someone like my mom you're gonna go ah it moved and then take over what what is you know what should you do yeah, I think everyone's going to have their own line about when, when you know, when they take over, how much confidence they have in the, in the system's ability. Right, but that causes problems. That shouldn't be the case. It should be very clear cut as to, you know what, the Tesla doesn't have it here. Driver needs to take over. Hey, so the um, so Jerome Guillen has been with a Tesla for like 10 years now, and he suddenly left the company last week. He, he just took over uh, what the semi program or something not so long ago. Yeah, in March. In March, yeah, that's so. This was an unexpected departure, I think, and uh, and I don't know, I don't, I don't know if there's a whole lot to say about this, except that you know it's just one of those nagging things. You know, it kind of worries me to see someone who just took over that portfolio suddenly leave and like who's going to take his place does that mean semi is going to be delayed a little bit now yeah well i, I was uh giving it the big one on my podcast when he and that happened and i'm like hey look here's elon's right hand man like uh, he was president of automotive and they've moved him into be head of uh, of commercial trucking that's how important they see as a company the future you know not just making cars but making trucks that's going to be a big big business as well he's such a key guy they're putting him into this which seems like a demo Ocean, but it's not and i was giving it all that in march on the podcast and now uh, he's gone and people have been emailing me to go yeah you idiot it was obviously just a way to get him you know like to as he was leaving the company a demotion it was something to get him to stay or whatever this guy he his background is a daimler trucks and he has a commercial background as well so but very very much key to uh he, you know, he's been on um shareholder calls very very important person at tesla and I know what you mean, Dom. What what is odd sometimes in these situations is a bit like when uh, JB Straubel was was leaving to to move on to his next project. There was very much a hey, you know, JB's going to you know stay with Tesla and he's a big part of the family, but he's winding down and here's you know some other guys and um uh, uh and it was Drew, wasn't it, that was kind of being built up uh, as JB and there was a clear handover. Um, and then this was just, they had to issue a, we only found out because they had to legally uh, issue a financial kind of procedure statement on this, is, which is how we found out. He's already gone. Um, and it was, it, it's that. It's like there's no clear handover. There's no, hey, thank you. It was just a one-liner. And it's like, man, that's it's odd. There's something weird happening about that. It's this weird kind of stench of of negativity around the company which is really bothering me because the stuff they're making is really good they're just not helping themselves with how they communicate right. they should have a pr department 
Fish, fish oh, shirt. that's that's getting real spicy. You know, I don't know if they're ready for something it, like that, Mark. Yeah, it's a big move. A big, a big move. move. So er, earlier in the show, I I, said, I wasn't sure if uh, Drew Baglino had left the company. I, for some reason, I, I thought he had, but he has not. I so I just want to make that clear. He's he's still with them. I'm looking at his LinkedIn page. He's been with the company 15 years and four months, which is you know significant. Mm. And he's the SVP of Powertrain and Energy Engineering. So. Mm. Yeah, so, but there was a very clear handover when, you know, and again, you know, somebody like J.B. Straubel, who was with Elon Musk from the very early days, like Jerome, you know, these key lieutenants leaving uh, happens to all companies. Yeah. Like, you know, it gets because it's Tesla, it gets overblown. All people move on in well, all jobs. I mean, when yeah. you're just awarded, you know, a big portfolio like Semi, and then a couple of months you're gone, that's, you know, not quite business as usual, I think. That's the only part of it that uh, makes me just take a say hmm a little bit. But as right. far as you know, Jerome leaving, you know, the, this the auto industry is extraordinarily incestuous. You know, the, the, there's you know, you're working for Ford one day, you're working for GM the next day, then Volk, you're at you're over at Volkswagen. I, I can't, uh, yeah, I can't follow how the how everybody that I um, you know have forged. Uh, relationship with how they've you know bounced back and forth from for, from company to company. So the fact that he was there ten years is amazing as it is, and you, you do get burned out. And you know when you're when you're in that position uh, at Tesla for so long, you, you know you know he's been uh, has had many of offers. You know over 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 the last few years, maybe he just said, you know what, a fresh start is something that I need. I'm a little burned out here, and it's time to move on. Uh, the, so so to me, there's. The only thing that makes it even slightly interesting was that he just, uh, you know, was reassigned and, and took over that new position, uh, you know, a few months ago. Uh, but 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 just the fact that he left, that, that, that there's, you know, that's a big nothing burger. This happens all the time. All right. Hey, so let's move on real quick. Uh, we were reported a couple of weeks ago that Ford will be introducing two new platforms by 2025, electric vehicle platforms, one for trucks and SUVs and one for cars. Uh, well, with the debut of the not electric Ford Maverick compact pickup truck this week, we may have a better idea of what to expect in a in response to a tweet suggesting that Ford won't build a compact electric pickup truck and that people should, you know, maybe just buy the F-150 Lightning instead. Uh, Product Communications Director Mike Levine tweeted out a, a photo and it's, it's kind of like this one that you see here on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube or on Twitch. Um, he tweeted a photo of it. So the photo is from the, the recent Capital Day, Market Days uh, event showing, and it shows a compact electric pickup outline. You can see that has the electric um, powertrain on the bottom there with the outline of a compact pickup truck. Uh, and the other photo that the photo that I actually tweeted had, had a gentleman standing beside it. And you can see it, it is small, like the Ford Maverick. Uh, so in light of the, the debut of this Ford Maverick, it seems likely that this could be a Ford Maverick Lightning if they decide to, to keep keep that nomenclature. Um, see, so and if they do make one, they would. It sounds like they would have to keep the same sort of value equation that the full size version has. So, so this uh, so this new pickup truck they, ha they just released. It's a uh, the, the base is uh, a hybrid and it's super cheap. It, you can get it for under under twenty grand, which is like incredible value right now um so tom do you think a ford maverick lightning in the low 30s would sell oh absolutely uh whether we'll get it or not I, you know who knows well, i mean at one point it will be elect it will be electrified you know the the whole lineup is that's one of the things that i i it kind of bothers me a little bit when we when we make these announcements that like Ford or GM says there'll be an electric this of of course there will be you know I know it's something when they actually make that announcement and admit it but you know yeah it's going to be electric their entire lineup is going to be electric in in ten years uh, but but the um, I mean they'll just still be able to buy some the gas versions but there will be electric versions of everything uh, but yeah I, I, you know what I kind of wish Tom to be honest with you. I understand they were trying to keep the price point down and, and that's an important equation here. And if they made this thing fully electric right now, probably be pushing, you know, at least 40 grand. Um, but it would have been so cool if they could have had this come out in a plug-in hybrid with like, you know, a uh, 40 miles range, you know, so somewhere around there, 40, 45 miles range. I mean, I think that would have, that would have, that would have satisfied so many people that are maybe, you know, thinking about a plug-in, but don't want to give that up because they need to drive really far. And, and, uh, 
yeah, you know, I, I think that would have made this such an incredible vehicle if if it could have been like, say, like the the Rav Four uh, Prime, you know, right. something along the, that lines with that size of a battery and that size, that type of uh, you know, electric range. Uh, it would have been so cool. Maybe maybe that's on the back. Maybe we'll get that in a couple of years. But even as it is right now, I think it's going to be a home run for Ford. Oh yeah, but I think the uh, to your point, I think the uh, plug-in hybrid could have been used to give it like performance, you know, as well because now it's got the uh, so it's a front-wheel drive, mm -hmm. the base version, uh, hybrid with on the the engines on the Atkinson cycle, which means that it's a low power but good fuel economy thing. It gets like forty miles a gallon, I believe. Um, Right, so you have to get the upgraded motor, though, not the hybrid motor, the EcoBoost motor. Right, you get, if you, you want it in or... for well, if you want it in four-wheel drive, you right. can't get in all-wheel drive with the with the hybrid, uh, the base motor. So, um, and I, and I checked that out. So it's still it's if you want an all-wheel drive Maverick, it starts at like twenty-five and change, some of it, which is fantastic. Oh, and yeah. you have a great engine too. That's a great yeah. drivetrain. Yeah, you have to remember these compact pickup trucks have been growing every year. I've had a compact pickup truck in my driveway for the last 25 years. You know, the, you know, I had the 19, I think a 1987 Mitsubishi was my first one. And ever since then, I've had a compact pickup truck, but they've grown right. considerably. But my Tacoma now, my Tacoma now is as big as the Tundra was when it first came out. So while these compact pickup trucks have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, Ford went back and said, Hey, you know, you know, people like these smaller trucks. That was just kind of like driving uh, 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 like an El Camino that, that was, uh, you know, a lifted El Camino, you know, you, you get that small size, you can it, practical practicality of just driving like a, a, like a car, but you do have some area in the back that you can't really haul sheets of plywood very easily and so forth. But a lot of people don't need to do that. So I think this is brilliant that they went back to that smaller compact pickup truck size and they're going to sell a ton of them, whether they're gas, whether they're hybrid, whether they're electric, I don't care what powertrain it is. Ford's going to sell the hell out of them. Yeah. Oh, just just that uh, sheet of plywood point. Uh, you can actually put uh, plywood in there and it sits on top of the wheel wells in the back. And okay. then the tailgate has a special. Uh, it said you can close it only halfway. You can set it to close it only halfway so it supports the back of the plywood. So you can actually haul plywood with it, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything left to say about the electric Ford Maverick coming, except, you know, I think it'd be awesome because people have, man, for years, ever since, you know, they stopped making the small Toyota Tacoma, people have been crying for an actual small yeah. compact pickup. Truck. Well, the, the original, the Ford Ranger of years ago, I'd love to see, I, I, I should look one. that up. The stats, do you, you have that? I have you a have Ford the, Ranger in my garage. Yeah. Right, but do you, like, what's the dimensions of that? I'd love to see the length and width and height of like a you know a twenty year old Ford Ranger and compare it to the Maverick now because the the Ranger has gotten bigger also right right yeah the new Rangers yeah yeah They're definitely bigger yeah that, and those are bigger than than my Ranger but not by too much I think yeah I need to see I should check up I'll look up those numbers that's right all right so speaking of electric pickup trucks and their viability uh, the bell may be tolling for the Lordstown Motor Endurance electric pickup. Um, it may not endure long enough to reach the end of the production line, it seems. In a 10K filing, the company said, we, re we require additional capital to implement our business plan, and it may not be available on acceptable terms, if at all, creating substan a substantial doubt as to our ability to continue as a going concern. So that doesn't sound promising. Uh, the company wasn't without some small triumphs, despite the cash crunch. They did build 48 of 57 uh, beta vehicles for the program they have that's set to end by the end of June, their, their beta program. Uh, and the endurance did pass two of the most difficult crash tests, the frontal and pole, telephone pole side crash test. Uh, production was supposed to begin in this December. So I don't know the company is still going ahead with its Lordstown Week promotional event kicking off on the 21st of this month. Uh, so, but basically, it, it, while it might be able to get some some money from the advanced technology vehicle manufacturing loan, the ATVM loan that's been in place since I believe George Bush, Bush started that program, and other government programs, it seems like the company really needs a savior with deep pockets. So, Kyle, with the F-150 Lightning offering such great value and capability, 
Are there enough customers out there for a truck from a startup company like this? Well, it would have to be fleet sales because why wouldn't you buy an F-150 with a service and sales network already in place? That's a huge part of it right there. Right. Lordstown didn't build a uh, exciting brand image like Rivian did where Rivian, again, not a product you can't purchase today on the road, but has captured the hearts and minds of people who want to go adventuring. F-150, battery electric. It's Ford, one of the largest global automakers, announcing a product that will be sold through their dealer distribution network. They have a track record of bringing Mach-E to the market. I think it feels a little bit more tangible, a little bit more real. Uh, Lordstown has always done some interesting things. You know, they recently took a truck down to Baja and they uh, tried to run it in one of the races down there and they got... You know, they were like, oh, we didn't realize how much range we would use on the sand and ran out of charge. Well, duh. Uh, so, you know, actually, I was even almost involved in that project on the back end. Uh, the friends of mine provided the charging solution for them. I don't even think they got far enough to use it. And I was going to go down there and cover that race. Glad I didn't because that would have been a disaster. And, uh, you know, all around, I'm just not not feeling the love over here. I feel like they really need to capture the hearts and minds of people if they want it to become a viable product. Now you could argue that, you know, and Tom makes this argument a lot and he's not wrong here where, you know, when you're selling to fleets, it's just about the numbers. That's it. Tell me on paper how this car is going to be better. That's fine. But have we seen any numbers from them as to how they're truly going to be better than anyone else? No, because F-150 base work truck spec with the small battery, they're going to sell a trillion of those. No, I totally agree. But I also agree if Lords, Lordstown did manage to bring the vehicle to, to market and it was, and it was a, a relatively decent vehicle, they would sell as many as they can make to fleets because the, the Ford is just, isn't going to be able to make enough. F I agree. And, and, and neither can, there's, there's going to be such a tremendous demand for electric pickup trucks and electric delivery vans that you know just get them to market if they're if they're good vehicles if they're reliable vehicles have decent range I don't care what brand it is they're going to sell the hell out of them and uh, you know that's the one thing that's disappointing if this turns out that that Lodestown doesn't make it is uh, you know that 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 it's just going to put a, a, a bigger crunch on the companies that are providing them it's going to make it even harder to get. The, the vehicles that do actually hit the market. So I'm, I'm pulling for everybody, but I've always, and I've you know made no secret about that here on the podcast. I've always kind of been looking at Lordstown with, uh, you know, oh, yeah. a, a fair amount of skepticism, yeah. uh, especially after that big, um, uh, uh, what was it? That press conference they had when Pence went and visited um, right. Lordstown. Oh, my God, they didn't talk about the truck at all. It was like oh, a, cool. uh, a, a, a you They're know, cool. a, yeah, it was it, it, honestly it was it, it was like a campaign stop, and and we didn't hear anything about the the truck for you know the truck was just sitting sitting behind them. I mean that there you had the world looking at you. You had the vice president on the stage. Tell us about how great this truck is and how you're going to be bringing it to market and all details of you know how many you're going to be able to make and all stuff. But but they'd be lying know. because they can't bring it to market anyway. Yeah, well so that's maybe why it's a good thing they yeah. didn't say anything. Well, that was telling. Yeah. At, 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 when we went, when they had that press that press conference, or it was like, wow, like they don't have anything here, you know, or they'd right. be telling us. Right. So this isn't it, a, a surprise. It's unfortunate, but it's definitely not surprising. And I'm I'm kind of disappointed because I'd really like to see in wheel motors in, in a production vehicle. I know this is kind of a weird technology thing, but it, I, that is weird because you're not going to notice any driving difference. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, it's just one of those things that's been around. I mean, I've been, I was really hyped on them like a dozen years ago. And, you know, the people were going to use them in sports cars and that didn't pan out. And they're going well, to just shows you it's a, it's a out. less effective technology. If 12 years ago it came out, right. And then right. no one's implemented it. And we just put motors on axles, which right. is cheaper and probably more durable. I, why are you so excited about in wheel motors? It's obviously a flawed technology if no one's implemented it over the last 12 years. Right. You know, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe, maybe it was just because of the uh, performance promises at the time that were, you know, kind of superior to other technologies that were available. And, uh, but you know, now I was now just was 20, like, 000, I, 20, I, I think RPM, they're cool too. Yeah. 20,000 <laughs> RPM Tesla motors. It's, you know, it's hard to compete with that kind of, kind of thing. Oh yeah. I mean the, the, the lucid motors, the Tesla motors are by far going to be competing for the highest quality production, uh, you know, hardware in a vehicle, I think, uh, from, for an electric motor. Um, but Aptera's got in-wheel motors, so right. you'll be able to experience that soon. Hopefully, Hopefully. again, if Hopefully. they make it to production, right. not a real thing yet. Right. 
Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, about what, what I like about them is I just like the fact that you know it's the packaging of it. So you know, your your platform has the, like the battery, you have the motors and the wheel. There's there's no, you know, uh, gearboxes you know taking up space. So and they're infinitely controllable. You know, it, every wheel can be torque vectored exactly, uh, traction control, all that kind of stuff. Well, it's no different than individual motors on an axle like a Tesla, and you get the weight off of the unsprung mass of the wheel. Like the, even the Plaid has like a tri-motor. Only you had to get the Remac Nevera, it was two and a half million dollars to get actual, you know, four-wheel torque vectoring. Oh, four-wheel kind of torque vectoring. Okay, here we go. But you're not going to notice much of a difference there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I haven't I mean, had a chance to drive one yet. vehicles. Torque vectoring isn't like a new thing. They've been in cars for 20 years. Right, but um, using brake systems and not electronically controlled. Uh, well, BMW had the most crazy complicated rear diff that was not a brake controlled rear torque vector. It launched in the BMW X6, which is a weird vehicle to launch it in. And this is back in like 07, 05, some, I think 07. Uh, anyway, really crazy tech. But torque vectoring is not new. It is magical. It is very cool. Uh, I've driven plenty of cars with it. We get cars in all the time with mechanical torque vectoring, not brake uh, torque vectoring, and it is a magical experience. So in-wheel hub motors, Dominic, I think we should do uh, a little video specific on hub motors. You and I go, and, and let's go celebrate the weirdness of hub motors. <laughs> okay. Maybe I just I like how Dom had to get uh, Remac in here one, one more, more time, time in the podcast. <laughs> Martin, can you make uh, 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 something so that every time from now on, when Dominic mentions Remac in the podcast, like it'll say, like a one will show up. And then yeah. when he says it again, <laughs> two. So at the end of each podcast, you'll have a little note at the bottom. Dom's Remac refer references number four. You know, yeah, I, I think drink. that'd be a cool, a, a cool thing to add. He's going to keep doing it but until we get Marte on the show. He's just going to keep doing it, isn't he? <laughs> it, it'll never I, if it works. I, I hey. I'm, I'm all for it. You know. <laughs> all right. Hey. So really quickly, uh, Fiat, the Italian automaker, is now part uh, that is now part of the Stellantis family of brands. It's switching to all electric over the next ten years. Uh, it's already started, of course, with the Fiat 500 electric, which is now available only as a battery powered car. I mean, the new version of it. You can still buy, I believe, the original. Uh, Fiat 500 Cinquento uh, thing, but you know their new product is only electric, and things will only pick up speed between 2025 and 2030. They say, according to Olivier Francois, who is the Fiat CEO and Stellantis CMO, uh, the next ve electric ve vehicle in its lineup is thought to be by some. Uh, I believe it will be the Fiat Panda, which Martin, I believe, is a pretty popular vehicle over there in the UK. I don't know if it's popular. It used to be. It's still on sale <laughs> alongside cars like the Tipo, and uh, but it doesn't get a lot of love anymore. There's three versions of it still on sale. Okay, but well, it's called the Panda. You, 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 I thought legendary car. I, might, I learned to drive in a Panda when I was about fourteen oh, okay. with a cushion on the seat, and uh, uh, my first car was a Fiat Uno. And then I bought uh, my first car that I bought when I uh, moved out of uh, home at eighteen. I was a, a, a Cinquecento. So. Oh, I like I like cheap little city fiats. Right. So I just thought it, I would bring that up just because it's nice to see a, a company going all, you know, all electric, of course. And Stellantis, uh, the you know family of brands, doesn't have a lot of uh, electrification going on in like the North American side of things, the Ram and Dodge. So yeah. Uh, so moving on really quick. Uh, the Kia EV6 first edition, of which 1,500 uh, vehicles. Uh, were available for customers in the U.S. is sold out. So if you missed your, miss out on your opportunity to put in your order, Kia says there's still a chance. So just go to the Kia website, and there you can join a waitlist. We have a few reservation holders on the Inside EVs forum, so if uh, so, it's going to be interesting to watch their journey uh, to getting their vehicles. Uh, for those of us who aren't quite ready to take the leap to a first edition uh, version, though, we, we did at least get a price point to consider. $58,500. That's a lot of money. For that money, though, besides the car, you get a choice of, you, you got a choice of three free gifts, free gifts, uh, an Apple Watch, a thousand kilowatt hours of charging, or what, 81% 80, of customers selected a home charging unit. Uh, Wait, are you serious? This is actually a thing. They're like, buy our car and we'll give you an Apple Watch? Yes. That is so cringy. What on earth? I don't know. I I think maybe there's some functionality with the Apple Watch to uh, using their the car, 
their app on the Apple Watch. I believe that's there's oh, some yeah. interoperability there. And Apple's a big deal for a lot of people. I don't know. But yeah, well, just make it all three at this point. Like, you don't make people choose right. which one of the benefits they want. Just say, hey, thanks so much. And uh, by the way, we're going to get you this. But be like, oh, we're going to get you something. But which one of those things? I just <laughs> think that's really cringy. Uh, someone asked, uh, Louis Diaz asked, is, or Diaz asks if pre-ordering is available yet for Ionic 5. I'm not really sure. Oh. Depends where. Depends where, you're, yeah, uh, where Europe, you live, Louis. In Europe it is. And we do, ha actually, I think it is actually, yes. Uh, we have some Ionic 5 reservation holders on the uh, Inside EVs forums. So you can definitely hop over there and find out what's going on with that. Um, so the just just getting back to the EV6 really quick. The first edition EV6 has a top of the trim is a top of the tr uh, line trim with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and all wheel drive, 256 miles of range, 5.1 seconds, zero to 60. Uh, it's going to be available in more affordable configurations with a smaller 58 kilowatt hour battery and rear wheel drive. The rear wheel drive version with the big battery is said to be good for 300 miles of range. How much is it? $58,000 for 250 it's, miles of range and five point something seconds to 60. Yes. Why wouldn't you just buy a model Y dual motor? Good question. I hate to be that guy no. because I, I hate people that say the same thing, <laughs> but like, <laughs> why wouldn't you just buy a model Y or an ID four all wheel you, like you might like the styling of this. You might like, uh, it's I don't great. Think anyone's going to like the styling of this. Do oh, you? The model Y? <laughs> I mean, the model Y is ugly, but this is the disaster. <laughs> right someone needs their breakfast and a, and a coffee because... I got beer don't worry <laughs> <laughs> last night's beer amazing oh, right. so someone's I, grumpy know, hangry get there, in there. there there are some there are some reservations for, i mean they sold out so you know obviously some people are interested in this thing uh and it, it was kind of a bumpy rollout but we'll get into that another time uh so just before we head out i just also wanted to say that jaguar has announced a new and better equipped 2022 ipace so that's still going to be for sale kyle wants to say something yeah it's the same as the 2021 ipace for europe that's finally coming here yeah uh, it's, the, it's the one i had last year and right, it's right. Uh, they fixed it you know what they fixed is they fixed the software uh, which is less terrible, but still terrible because half the pages that you go to have got a back button and half the pages, they haven't put a back button on. So you'll be like five or six sub menus deep. And then you'll be like, no, I want to go back to the previous page. And then you've got to press the home button. And then and go then, all the way through. Uh, and the way through. Wow. So come on, Jackie, I sort it out. Yeah, yeah, but I love that car. It's a car that has gotten zero media attention. They have one yes. media vehicle for the entire country. No way. I don't even think they loan out anymore. Well, you need, and, to, get the, you need to get the new one. You need to get them on the horn and, and get... This, it's I want it's to not going to make any difference. Action. No one buys them anyway. Well, it's a great they don't know driving there. EV, though. Oh, it's a great car. It's a great drive car. drive fantastically. It is awesome. Love it. And... The best part about iPace is now use their under 40 grand or getting close yeah. to that mid 40 grand mark. So that's the money. I wouldn't buy a new one. I'd deal with some of the issues of the old one for half the price. Get a maxed out spec earlier iPace, get a certified one with a big warranty and yep. have fun. They're really well put together. Really well made. Anthony C is in the comments making the case for the EV6. It's got oh, I knew it was coming. fast charging, <laughs> augmented reality HUD. Key is long warranty. Hey, I mean, those are things that people Look, like. They're selling things on numbers and paper and like, great, it all's fine. But a car is an emotional buying decision that you need to feel connection with. And I don't feel connections with long warranties. Like that doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> oh, long warranty. Wow, that's a real amazing experience to own this car. Maybe right. some well, people do. We'll have that's to get you behind the wheel and see if it'll change your mind. You know, maybe oh, I'm driving sure drive great. And I'm sure I'll change my mind. But as oh, Martin said, I haven't had my Starbucks yet. Today, so. <laughs> oh, we need to let you go. Okay. Okay, but well, I wanted to at least say that the EV6 truly is not a pretty car. Brilliant. Okay, from the rear, at least. <laughs> um, so that brings us to the end of our show. I'd like to thank you all for joining us. If you have any comments about any of the topics on today's show, you can comment on the Inside EVs podcast post, the YouTube comment section, or on the Inside EVs forum podcast thread where we collect all the episodes. Um, if you liked the show, please give us a thumbs up uh, if you're watching on YouTube or a rating if you're listening on another platform. Uh, don't forget you can find and follow our panelists on Twitter. Tom Malogny is at Tomalog. Martin Lee is at EV News Daily. Kyle Connor is at Out of Spec. I'm at Dominic underscore Y. Click subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications, please. And we'll see you all again next week. Ciao.